Are you gonna kind of like be the lead on this? Me, 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 me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> everyone today we are going to be addressing a topic that I have been posting about on social media and I know that there are two really big diets I hate that word but there are two big eating lifestyles that are super popular right now and that is keto and paleo and with the new year coming there's probably a lot of you out there who are like i need to do something i am ready to start feeling my best and i don't know which diet will be best for me so brandon my boyfriend here is with me he is keto and as you guys know i am paleo we're going to be addressing um, the differences between the two of them we uh, had you ask us a lot of questions about keto and paleo and so we're just going to go over those questions real briefly and then you can kind of decide which uh, eating lifestyle would be best for you. So, Brandon, hi. Thanks Howdy. For, thanks for joining me <laughs> oh, today. <yeah. laughs> I kind of forced them to do this. <laughs> questions. And so the first question that we had was really what is the difference? And so I'm going to go over what paleo is. Brandon's going to go over what keto is. We're going to talk about the main differences and we're going to talk about the similarities. Um, paleo is also known as the caveman diet. So basically if you can hunt it or if you can gather it, you can eat it. Um, it focuses on the principle that eating foods which are were available to like early humans, you know, cavemen, um, is what would give us optimal health. The focus of paleo is to really create an optimal health for your body by eating really what our bodies were designed to eat. So Yes, you will lose weight probably with paleo, but that's not necessarily the main goal. The main goal of paleo is to just treat your body good and feel it with the right foods. Um, the foods that are eliminated in paleo are grains, legumes, processed sugar, and most dairy. The reason why we eliminate those foods is because yes, grains are grown from the ground, but over time, you know, the grains that we have today are nothing like the grains that we had hundreds of years ago. They're very modified, they're very processed. Um, legumes have, so if you don't know what a legume is, it's like a pea or a chickpea or like beans and stuff. And the reason why we remove those from our diet is because they have lectin in them, which is an inflammatory. So it's not that they're bad for you, it's just if you were trying to get an optimal health, then removing those from your diets is gonna be best. Obviously, processed sugar, processed food, I don't even have to explain to you guys why that's bad, it's just bad for your body. And then most dairy. Brandon, I um, I started keto after the new year two years ago. Um, when I first did it, I lost 35 pounds in about four months, um, and I just kept the, the ball rolling from there and made it into my lifestyle. Um, so keto and paleo do go hand in hand. There are many similar foods between the two, uh, however, keto eliminates a few more food items uh, to keep your carb intake very, very low. Uh, the normal ma macro nutrient ratio on a ketogenic diet is 80% fats, 15% protein, and 5% carbs, or in that ballpark for the most part. So when you do cut your sugars and your carbs that low, uh, your body has to switch where it's getting its fuel from. So when you do cut your carbs and sugar that low, your body is forced into a ketogenic state. Now, when people first start doing keto, it is hard at first, uh, but over time, you can literally get the mitochondria in your body better at burning fat. Um, so it does take time, and at first, a lot of people can experience uh, what they call keto flu, um, or some, uh, I got a keto rash personally, um, on my arms, which is kind of weird, but um, this, most people have been burning carbs and glucose their entire life, and they, when they do this reduction, it's really hard at first, um, and they may think it's the diet itself, and they, they give up right away. So it does take some time to switch into a ketogenic state, but essentially your body is going to shift into using stored body fat as energy, and a byproduct of fat metabolism are ketones. So once your body switches to running off ketones, um, you'll know because there are test strips you can use uh, to see if, you're, if there are ketones in your bodies. There's blood test strips you can use too. That's kind of unnecessary. But 
uh, overall, you can kind of just feel it. You just kind of know, mm -hmm. um, and it is a good state to get into because if you have ketones in your body, that means you are burning fat, and that's why people do like this diet because you know that you burn fat to get those ketones, and it is a good way to lose weight. Um, so that's kind of keto in a quick nutshell. Uh, we go much more farther into it, but... Bottom line fine. is uh, keto and paleo are very similar. Keto is way more... Um, I would say strict like you have to be you have to be dedicated like Brandon was saying um, your first few weeks are not gonna be like oh I'm on keto I feel great like a new me um, it's it's a process because you have to get your body into that state of ketosis and so that brings us to our next question really quick is let's explain what ketosis is because I don't think a lot of people actually know what ketosis is do you wanna say I thought I already talked about that did you Kind of. Okay, well, I'm just going to quick summary. <laughs> Ketosis basically means that your body is not running off of sugar and carbs. It means that your body is running off of fat, and it burns just fat, not sugar and carbs. Uh, okay, so what the similarities are, both of them rely on whole foods. Um, somebody asked us a question, does it really matter if you eat grass-fed meat or organic fruits and vegetables in both of these diets? Um does it matter if we eat grass-fed? Not on keto. I mean, if you can afford to eat that, then do it. Uh, I don't think it's a make or break on that. It's mostly about the macro nutrients to follow. It is hitting that 5% carb. It is about getting up to 80% fat. And you can do that with grass-fed or without grass-fed beef or with just the normal cheap eggs you can buy at the store or with the grass-fed, hormone-free, yada, yada product you can buy. But obviously that stuff is better for you, but if you can't afford it, then don't sweat it. Yeah, um, and then for paleo, again, you don't have to, but the point of paleo is to eliminate your body of all the processed foods, all of the toxins, all the pesticides, all of the hormones. You want your food to be as pure as possible. So. Getting grass-fed food and organic fruits and vegetables is going to be best for paleo. I mean, I think that would be best for any diet, really, if you can. If you can afford it. Um, the thing is, is everyone says, you know, grass-fed food and organic food, it's expensive. It is. Like, it genuinely is. And that I understand why we have a obesity epidemic is because I can go to McDonald's and I can get a whole meal for my family for under $10. I can get a whole meal for my family under $5. Um, I can buy a pepper at the store for like $3. Like there's something wrong with that. Um, but in the long run, you end up saving money because you're not gonna be spending it on medical bills. So it really is an investment in your health and your life. Um, I think that, Okay, the, another thing is um, that was similar is, you know, both eliminating grains. Um, on paleo, you can have potatoes. You can have sweet potatoes and, like, butternut squash and all that. Those are really high in carbs. Not on keto. Nope, no potatoes. No potatoes. <laughs> Sorry. So if you're in the Midwest, sucks to suck. <laughs> all right. Why choose one of, over the other? And it really is, like, it's a personal preference. Like, what are your goals? I think that... We can both agree that if your main goal is to rapidly lose weight, if you, I think you, sh I think I want to be careful how I say this because um, I don't like to talk about weight loss, and I, I don't think that weight loss is the ultimate goal that everyone should have. There are people that do need to lose weight though, and so I would recommend them to do keto, um, especially if you're a man. I think that keto is a great diet. If you're a woman and you have lots of hormones in your body already. Um, introducing lots of meat and cheese into your diet rapidly is not going to be optimal for your health. Um, what do you, how do you feel? Um, for me, going and doing the keto diet just made sense because for the most part, even before I did keto, I ate a lot of meat, a lot of dairy, a lot of cheese, mm -hmm. um, a lot of foods that were already in that group. So I didn't have to make that drastic of a change to do it. Um, so it kind of, when I found out about the diet um, from the Joe Rogan podcast is where I actually found it out at. But when I did find out about it, I was like, that's kind of how I already anyways. So mm -hmm. it just made sense to go that route. And I started it after the new year around January. And I think many people around that time are trying to burn body fat. And so that's what I was trying to do because I had ballooned up a little bit. So my goal was to lose body fat. And I think that 
genuinely the fastest way to do that is a ketogenic diet. And healthy. Uh, I think that it's a healthier way to do it versus there's some other extreme diets. Um, the only thing that is faster is a ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting add into that, but that's a whole nother video, so we mm -hmm. won't get into that right now. Uh, but if that is your end goal is to legit just cut body fat and at the same time build lean muscle mass because you're not going to lose any muscle mass doing this either, mm -hmm. um, then the ketogenic diet is the way to go. And Mackenzie says this a lot, but I think it is easier for guys to do it too. Uh, that's more her department to handle, but I guys have probably easier to go with that diet. Yeah. I do know a lot of women that have done keto. I actually did keto for like two weeks. I know that's not long enough to do keto to see results. Um, but the reason I stopped doing it is I, I already had a little bit of a thyroid issue. So one of the questions that people, that somebody asked is, do either of these diets help with hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism? And I'm going to keep this really short and sweet. Um, if you have hypothyroidism, do not do keto. I'm just going to tell you that right now. If you are a female who suffers from thyroid issues, I would highly recommend the paleo diet because it is so wholesome. Is that the word I'm looking for? It's so whole and it is um, the cleanest diet that you can do. Um, supplements. Let's talk about supplements really quickly. Um, you nailed it when we talked about it earlier. And so I'm just going to let you say. So a ketogenic diet is low in electrolytes so sodium potassium magnesium are hard to get on this diet and we'll um, also we're gonna write down all of these at the end and post it somewhere so that you guys can like actually have a copy and paste of it so for sodium buy pink himalayan salt salt all of your foods salt is good for you yeah that's good um, for paleo too is pink himalayan um, potassium lemon buy lemons put it in your water every time you're drinking water make sure there's lemon in it um and magnesium um I buy a supplement for magnesium. Um, also, just a good general men's or women's multivitamin, mm -hmm. um, B12 and D3. So sodium, potassium, magnesium, vitamin, B12, D3, I think are the basics. Oh, and fiber. You can uh, just eat, eat good food and get eat fiber or greens. get a supplement of like husk, uh, Brazilian husk fiber, I think it is. Um, I used to take, um, I don't anymore. Because when you first start it, you could have some stomach problems and you're gonna need that fiber, just to be honest, so. Or a it, probiotic. I always recommend a probiotic, but that's just because I don't. Know. I believe strongly in having good gut health. It's a girl thing. <laughs> I think it's just a healthy thing, but who's counting? <laughs> okay, so yeah, those are good supplements to take. Um, in both diets, really focusing on alkalizing your body, that means um, getting rid of the acid. So this is a really quick side note. A lot of the diseases that are caused in our bodies are because we have a high acidic level in our body. So like he said, putting lemon water. Um, I got into, into a habit of drinking a lot of aloe vera juice, like pure aloe vera juice. Tastes disgusting, but it helped my stomach a lot and I felt really good afterwards. A lot of people are drinking celery, juice celery, um, that's really good for your gut health too. I'm gonna pass on that, but. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna make another video about fasting, but somebody asked, does fasting help for both? We're just gonna say a unanimous yes. Yeah. Fasting Fasting's is good. good. For you. <laughs> Do it. Um, and we're gonna make another video about that because it's a whole nother that, topic. <laughs> that's the icing on the cake for keto. Don't worry about that if you're just starting. Once you get into it more, that'll become easier as your body gets used to running off stored fat. Um, but again, that's going to be another 20 minute video from here. So <laughs> we'll, we'll pass for now. Cool. All right. Um, I think that's it. Anyways, we hope that you enjoyed this. This was kind of fun doing our first little couples video. And um, if you guys have any other questions about paleo or keto or um, which one might be best for you. I'd Team keto. <laughs> Team paleo. <laughs> we, we still love each other. It's okay. Um, we would love to help you guys out. And yeah, we're gonna post some stuff in the comment section below of um, people that we follow on Instagram, uh, recipe, where we get our recipes, where we get our- Supplements to take. Yeah, supplements, all that information. New Year's coming up, get to it. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys.